right, so we never got a chance to experience the torture that was Worksheet 10B yesterday, so let's do one Today. or two of them. Um, this is where, this is the more challenging type of these questions with phase shifts, okay? So number one, this is on Worksheet 10B. I want you to identify for me, please, the amplitude. It is three, very good. It's the absolute value of the number in front of your function. So in this case, three is three. Oops, come on, pen. There we go, it's a three. Now, this question is more challenging because of the nature of what's inside of the sine function. It is not in what we call factored form. So the first thing you should do on this question is write it in factored form. So the B value is clearly going to be a 2. It's whatever's in front of your variable. So in this case, you use x instead of theta. But So the 2 is the B value. But I need it separated from your phase shift, because this time we do have a phase shift. So if you were to factor out a 2 from here and here, that's just like dividing by 2. So what you would have here is plus pi over 2. So now that everything is separated, I could see that the phase shift is actually, what does that mean when you have x plus pi over 2 inside the parentheses? Left pi over 2. So you have to have them separated in factored form before you can say like, ah, clearly there's my phase shift. Okay, the period length. i got to calculate this because the period is normally 2 pi unless there's a b value other than 1. So in this case, we have a b value of 2 which means you're going to calculate the period to be a length of pi. There is no vertical shift here, so I'm not going to worry about that, which means I can bust out some highlighter pens. I use the line tool, that seemed to work well. Um, midline here at 0, amplitude of 3, so maximum line at 3 and minimum line at negative 3. I really should move these over though, because i got to shift to the left in a minute. Now, before I start talking about where I want to make marks, let's talk about quarter points. So the period length cut into quarters tells you how many, how far you have to move to the next mark. So pi over four is what we have to count by. So here's what I notice. I'm supposed to count by pi over fours, but my phase shift is a left pi over two. So I need to think in common denominators. I'm going to call this a 2 pi over 4, like Daniel said. Because that allows me to make tick marks. Now, if I was graphing my own thing, i just put a bunch of tick marks and call them all pi over 4s and count that way. Um, they've already given me tick marks, so can you tell where the pi over 4s are? Because they're here, they're just not labeled. Yeah, This so every tick mark is a pi over 4. So this guy right here must be a negative pi over 4, which means if I created one more, this would be a negative pi over 2. 2 pi over 4, also known as pi over 2. All right. So if the grid was not given to you, you'd have to then go and count, like tick, 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 adding um, 1 pi over 4 every time. Ready to graph? Here goes. Now we're graphing sine. Is there a reflection? That always gets me. No. So sine starts on the midline. This one starts at shifted left pi over 2. So here's your beginning point. Now remember, every pi over 4 is where you make a mark. Don't lose track of who's a pi over 4. All right. Next one goes up to the top. And then if you add another pi over 4, that brings you back to 0. Everybody forgets poor little 0. All right. The next one is down here at pi over 4. And then it ends here at pi over 2. Now, here's the last thing I'm going to do. Here's the beginning and here's the end. It started at negative pi over 2 and it went all the way to pi over 2. How far of a distance is that? Is that my period length? So that's how I know I fit. the phase shift really messes everything up. It's hard to visualize it, but like one period length is supposed to be a distance of pi. It is. Now I just have to ruin it by graphing. It started. I thought I had it, and then I got weird right here. And then it finished strong. It's okay. I've done worse. So are these fun? No. They got fractions. Oh, you think they're fun? Okay, my apologies. They're super fun, Daniel. Okay, all right. Uh, on the test, I'll have like five ordered pairs off to the side where you just write them there. I'm, for the sake of our time today, I'm skipping that part. That wasn't factored form, right? The one that you just skipped. This one? That's Yeah, well, it's weird because B is a 1, so there's nothing to factor out. Yep, that's a good question. 
Um, are these in factor form? <laughs> no. Um, we'll come back to the idea of frequency when we do other things. Other things. All right, today I would like to take a peek at. I don't know what's happening. I want to do some sinusoidal regression. So we had so many problems with that yesterday. And I, by we, I mean me mostly. Maybe. The idea of frequency is just the reciprocal of period, right? So frequency would be the number of seconds, uh, number of cycles per second. Right. And period would be number of. Okay, so the free. No. 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 A little different idea. Cycles and periods. Well, okay. You got to be careful. <laughs> so when we get to the modeling questions, they'll usually say things like, your Ferris wheel did so many revolutions per second kind of a thing. Um, and that is a frequency value, right. which is more real world. Right. We very rarely get given, like, here's your period length. So, um, but, I, you know, I take that back. Sometimes we will, because the length of the period is how long it takes for it to complete one cycle. So if you're on a Ferris wheel, how long does it take you to go around the Ferris wheel would be the period. Well, you're just making stuff up now. But, <laughs> yeah, something like that. Well, when we get to modeling on, we're going to start on Tuesday. Um... We'll see some clever examples and some not so clever. Hey, there's one about like the body temperature of an alien. Right? And how it changes. I think they're doing an autopsy on an alien body or something. It, like it's really, they. I don't know. I don't know who wrote that question. I don't know if we stole it from someone or like one day the kids were like, write a cool question and that's what, I don't know. <laughs> it's weird. You'll see it. You'll be like, huh, there it is. Um... So this is the worksheet that we did do yesterday, right? Yes. And we got through a lot of things. We had some trouble here, so write yourself some notes, because I was having a panicky moment yesterday. When it asks you on the newer calculators for iterations, always use three. And then when it says, like, period, just leave it blank. Now the other thing I want to write a huge note about. I don't think there's a note here anymore. Radian mode. Okay, and that might have been my problem yesterday. Who knows? I gotta be in radian mode. So my bad. I don't know. We were having all sorts of trouble with this yesterday. Let's try this one. This one looks less less uh, scary. Right? So they do tell you right here, x equals 1 can represent January. You gotta look for that piece of information, otherwise you might not set up your problem right. So this is good old-fashioned calendar marking, so... Get your data entered into list one and list two. I think I already have mine entered. And then once you're entered, could you please try doing a uh, sign rig? Whoop. Okay, just try that again. Let's see if it's still there. Pretty sure it was. Now, please do store your regression equation in Y1. If you have the newer calculator, you can cheat and do alpha trace. Um, if you have to go and grab Y1 the old way, you have to go to varies, Y varies, function. You gotta go a few places. I don't even know, is this the right answer, by the way? I didn't check my data. Okay, cool. <laughs> I did not check my data, so that was kind of a risk. My bad. <clears throat> Well, the, yes, that's not the problem. It's when you use the model. Because when it evaluates the function, that's when you get the problem with the mode. So I think it was a mode issue yesterday for some of us. <laughs> Anywho, um, write that equation down and round to wherever you need to round to. I mean, technically it doesn't say, so whatever. But let's go hundredths place if you haven't already written anything down. Oh, it does. No, it doesn't. <coughs> I got confused for a minute. I'm going to go back to that slide. I saw the word thousands. Yes, Daniel. Um, when we're writing these uh, uh, functions, yeah. do we put um, the, do we take the p value out of this 
No, no. Don't. Don't bother. Yep. We don't need factored form because we aren't actually going to do any math or graphing with it. We're just going to be using the calculator to evaluate it. So that's good news. Uh, where'd my go? Calculator. Okay. 12.01 we'd round that to. Because I apparently did not round. That's not even the file. Try again. That's not it either. Okay, you see what my problem is. I got too many files open. <clears throat> okay, 12.01, and then it's, this is what Daniel's asking about. So the notation, it's not in factored form, um, and we just kind of leave it like that. Since I don't have to, like, worry about phase shifts or where does the graph start and stop, I'm not actually doing any graphing. Now, one thing I do want to point out to you that might be fun or might be a waste of everyone's time, I don't know. Um, remember how we stored it in Y1? And I am in radiant mode, cool beans. If I go to zoom trig, sometimes I'm lazy and I just try that. I don't see anything. Okay. Do you remember what I forgot to do about scatter plots though? Forgot to turn my plot on. Gosh, be golly. I just, I went up and hit enter and it emphasizes it or de-emphasizes it depending on what it's asking about. Now, I, oh, back up. For zoom trig on this, it's not showing you anything. Let's go to zoom stat. There we go. That's better. Then it frames it around your scatter plot. Does that look like one of our friends? Now I know, so Daniel interprets that as a cosine graph, but remember we talked about it, like your calculator only interprets things as sine graphs. Did you not get this picture? Oh, okay. Um, but remember, because it's interpreting it as a sine, when I look down at my function, it's got a sine graph with obviously a weird period change and a some sort of a phase shift. So he's he's thinking his sine graph starts over here at whatever that number comes out to when you factor out the V. But the point is I don't care because I'm not doing any of this math. So what we're going to do today is I will have you write the function based on the graph, but they're going to be a lot prettier than that. Now, when it came to evaluating that question, um, it is up to you how you evaluate it. They want you to figure out what happens in October. So if I use my graph, I don't think you have enough of a window um, in your domain to evaluate it that way. So you might want to go to your table. And then in October, you got this number. But be careful. At the top of your problem, where'd you go, problem? Nope. There you go. At the top of your problem, it says these are the thousands of visitors that have visited the museum. Which makes sense, because I was a little suspect of the number 15 visitors visited my museum in the month of October. Your museum is terrible then. So that 15.37 two or whatever it was is really in the thousands so this answer is 15,372 visitors so careful on the word problem sometimes to make our math prettier and easier we we write them in different notations so rather than writing 10,000 visitors we just put 10 and then just later on say slap a thousand on it now which bothers me a little bit because do you think there's exactly 10,000 visitors so already we're working with like bogus data. So as a mathematician, I'm bothered by this whole problem. But the general pat maybe there was. But the general pattern was it was sinusoidal, which was interesting. Why do you think that would be? I mean, this is fake data, by the way. So don't get too excited. But why why would a business have sinusoidal data like this? You ever heard of peak seasons? Yeah. Yeah, and maybe like depending on what's going on in like is school in or out. The weather, like what kind of museum are you? The apple orchard definitely has some. If you looked at the, it, 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 like it peaks. Yes, yeah. exactly. It's you like should collect. You should get all that collect, data. Collect, yes, data. you should get it. You should get that data for us, and we can make our. We can see if it fits a sinusoidal um, regression problem. Ask, that would be very exciting, for me. No, no one else would care. Thank you. All right, could you do me a favor? Flip to worksheet, I believe it's 13. How many, how many data points do you want? Because I can give you, I can probably get them all three months, like every day from the whole three months. Seven. Seven. Okay. Yeah, so I can give you all three months. Okay. Yeah, I can give you all three months. Okay. Yeah, I can give you all three months. Okay. Yeah, I can give you all three months. Okay. Yeah, I can give you all three months. Okay. Yeah, I can give you all three months. Okay. Yeah, I can
we'll start there. And then we might realize like, wow, that is not sinusoidal. What we'll do is we'll, we'll plot it. We'll look at the scatter plot and like squint and see if the shape looks sinusoidal or cosinusoidal. The answer might be no. Maybe it looks quadratic. I don't know. I don't know. I've never tried. I mean, we could we could do it in we can do it in Excel. All uh -huh. right. Or Google Sheets, whatever whatever you people use these days. Yeah, we can. How fun would that be? I will see if that's possible. It'll be on your test. Like here's how many data points were we gonna get? A lot. All right. So worksheet. Sounds like enough. <laughs> All right, so this is worksheet 13A, I believe. This is going to get fun. I'm going to ask you guys to create the function. So I need you to be as lazy as I am. Make it easy for yourself. If you don't have to use a phase shift, don't use a phase shift. Let's say there's no phase shift on this one. So if I pretend like that is the start of my graph, if I move forward, this would be the end of one cycle, right? So like this guy right here is one, throw it at me, sine or cosine. This is clearly, in our interpretation, going to be a sine function. But there's always some weird kid out there who's like, I want to call it a cosine. Oh, no, he's too lazy to do that. Thank you. So if you wanted to call it a cosine, you're going to have to incorporate a phase shift. Good luck to you. No, thank you. All right, um, some formulas you might want to write down in your paper here, guys, because some of these get really crazy, especially when we get into modeling next week. The amplitude is found, it's half of the range. So you take the max minus the min, which is the range, and you cut it in half. Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> this one's easy to find, but sometimes they're not easy to find. The midline, guys, the midline is found by, it's the average line of the two max and min, right? So it's max plus min divided by two. The period length could be found by just figuring out when a cycle starts and stops. So essentially it's a subtraction problem. But the B value is found by taking 2 pi and dividing by the period length. So the reason I asked both of these questions here is because the period you can see on the graph, but in the formula, you actually don't care about the period. It's not part of the formula. You need to get the amplitude, the B, the phase shift, and the midline. These are the things that are involved in writing the equation. So, um, on your test, I'm not a fan of how we have this question sitting here. I'm going to be honest. I think this worksheet is older than me. And we just don't want to rewrite it because these are really hard to make. So, on a test, I will just tell you like how high up this maximum point is. I'll label it somehow. Um, so, can you just trust me when I tell you this is at 3? And then can you just trust me when I tell you this is at negative 3? Yes. Now, clearly the middle is 0, but if you didn't see that visual symmetry, you could use this formula right here and be like, yeah. Oh, this formula here, sorry. <laughs> the midline is 0. 3 plus negative 3 over 2 is 0. So you can write none, meaning there's no vertical shift. Or you could write y equals 0 because the midline's at 0. All right, let's talk about amplitude. You might see that the amplitude is a 3 just from the visual part of it. Otherwise, you could calculate it. Max minus min would be 6 divided by 2, which is 3. All right, period length. Yep, took a distance of pi for it to go through one cycle. Cool. So the b value would be 2 pi divided by 2, uh, divided by pi, excuse me. So it's a 2. There's no phase shift because you guys are very clever and made sure we didn't have one. We already found the midline. You already told me it's sign. The only thing I gotta be wary about is there a reflection based on where you're choosing to start no, it. No. There's no reflection. All right, let's rock and roll. Y equals amplitude is a three. You said it's a sine graph. Inside of the sine graph, this is where the B shows up. So this is a two, and then uh, there's no phase shift, so I don't need another set of parentheses, but I'm a very fancy lady, so I'm gonna use theta instead of x. Woo. You can use x if you want, it's okay. There's no vertical shift, so nothing off to the side. And that would be a pretty boring question to give you, but you'll see one like that. Hey. <laughs> so again, I, 
not a real big fan of what this looks like. But it is pretty clearly labeled. Oops, that's positive 0.5. This is negative 0.5. So where are you thinking that midline is? Zero. I'm with you. How big is the amplitude? 0.5. Mm-hmm, that's weird. All right, now, you have to decide where you'd like to start it. It's up for debate, but can we all be lazy, please? Cosine. Yeah. So real quick, she says, if this is a cosine and you say, I want to start it right there, then you don't have to worry about phase shifts. Cool beats. So if this is a cosine graph that starts and stops here, take a trick out of Adam's book and just circle cosine. I like it. See, we're all lazy. Yay. All right. Um, period length. How long did it take for it to finish that cycle? So yeah, from zero to six pi. So six pi. So calculating the B value is a one third. Remember, the B value tells you how much of a cycle it went through by the time it hit 2 pi. So like 2 pi is like yonder. So only a third of the cycle got completed at that point. So when you go to write your equation up, you don't even use the period, but you do use the amplitude, the B. Normally I'd use a phase shift, but there's none, and there's no vertical shift. And it's cosine. I think we're ready to go. The only thing I have to interpret is whether there was a reflection or not based on where Taylor started the graph. And the answer is no. So amplitude 0.5. Cosine. Inside of the cosine function, uh, there's no phase shift, so you won't need extra parentheses, but I'm just going to write one-third theta because I'm fancy. Now, even fancier, you could have written theta over three. Ooh. You don't have to. Oh, these are going to get boring real fast, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's a negative one, because I said so. This is a three. So depending on how smart you are at visualizing symmetry, I'm not. I have to calculate this every single time, okay? So the next thing I find is midline, which means I add them together and divide by two. I'm finding the average. So the midline is at a one. And the amplitude, I can see, is now a 2. Again, you could have used your formula. Um, max minus min divided by 2 would have come out the right way anyways. Uh, period. Y'all okay if I start at 0? Which means I have a cosine. Where does that, how long did it take for that cosine to complete the cycle? Pi over 2. Very good. <laughs> She's like rambling pi. Two halves pi, three pi, four. <laughs> the B value we're going to calculate. Oh, gross. Two pi divided by pi over two. All right, fifth grade. Kick in. How do you divide by a fraction? You multiply by the reciprocal. So this is really two pi times two over pi. Is this what you were muttering? Okay, the pi's cancel, and you end up with a four. There's no phase shift because you're very clever. Midline this time is somewhere special. It's at y equals one. Put all those thoughts together. Here we go. All right. Function y equals. Is there a reflection? I always forget to ask that question. No. So 2 cosine the b value. Throw it in there. There's no phase shift. So you don't need another set of parentheses. If you want to be fancy, use a theta. Otherwise, just use an x. And then a vertical shift of up 1. So plus 1. Beautiful. Hopefully something exciting shows up next. Oh, nothing exciting shows up. Yeah. All right, number four. Oh, this time we have, in my interpretation of this, oh, no, never mind. Okay, first of all, I got to do a little digging. I got to make sure that the midline is where I think it is. Again, I have really bad visual, like, symmetry ability, apparently. Where's the middle there? Negative two. Negative two. Oh. So that's not really exciting at all. That's just a stupid sine function. Yeah. Um, what do you mean by endpoints? Well, you're assuming that what I give you is like graphed at a, a whole number of cycles. So you just have to you just have to be careful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean I have to end the sine cycle at the end. I could be in the middle and just be like, whoop. <laughs> um, the other thing you got to be careful about is. Like every sine is technically a cosine, just with a phase shift and vice versa. 
So if you're calling it like it's a cosine because of the way you you thought about it, you just got to make sure that whatever that origination point is you're using, make sure if it has a phase shift that you're incorporating it into your function. We haven't seen a phase shift yet. And this one, if we use a sine function, we again won't see a phase shift. And I'm bored. Can we move on? <laughs> Number five. Finally, we have a phase shift. Okay. Now, first of all, you might not realize where your axes are. The axes are marked by these arrows. Okay. So I, this literally, this problem has been photocopied hundreds of times, I feel. And it's, it's got something to be desired. It's really hard to read. So this time, uh, it's up to you. Where would you like to start your function? And I need an answer. And you guys are always good about offering one. Go. Where do you want to start? Pi over 4. You want to start right there. Okay. Now, how did Taylor know that was even pi over 4? It's not labeled. She's very smart at fractions. She says, okay, if this is 0 and this is pi over 2, then right in the middle is pi over 4. So it doesn't really matter if you go forwards or backwards to determine the period length. I do not care. Uh, but at some point, you're going to have to figure out how long it took for the cycle to complete. So whether it's from here to here or here to here. We'll come back to that thought in a minute. All right, amplitude. Oh, man, guys, I don't know. This graph is awful. So I would have to either tell you the axes marks or label it better, or I'd have to label one of the maxes and mins. Let me just tell you, this is a six. And this one's a negative 10. Does it? Because I don't think so. Now, again, visual symmetry of Brousseau failure. So you're going to have to do a little calculation to find everything else. Remember the amplitude is max plus min divided by 2. And the midline is max minus min divided mm -hmm. by 2. So that kind of makes sense. Um, maybe to somebody, not me though. Oh, I screwed something up. Nope, I got that backwards. Burp. Very backwards. Like not even a little backwards, like all the way backwards. All right, let's try this again. 6 minus negative 10 over 2. And then 6 plus negative 10 over 2. I was about to write down that we had a midline at 8, and that didn't make any sense. Because that I could tell. The midline is at y equals negative 2, I'm hearing. Okay, that makes more sense. I'm not even going to draw that in. It's just gross. And then the amplitude is the 8. That's why I was so confused. Okay. Now, period length. Remember how Taylor very quickly was like, pi over 4. She, she figured out that all those little marks, the boxes, were measuring pi over 4. So since it's already graphed for you, you guys could just count with pi over 4s with me. Ready? This is 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4. I lost one. <laughs> Time out. One, okay. Okay. I'm not counting where I'm at on the graph. I'm trying to count how many things. Zero, right? Okay, one, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I wasn't, I just didn't have a mark. Eight pi over four is how far I, yes. This is a distance of eight pi over four. Daniel says better known as two pi. Now, the other way to get that number, you could be like, well, this is pi over four. And then somehow magically you could have figured out that this actual number over here is 9 pi over 4. Like the marking on the x-axis. And if you were to subtract these in whatever order, it is a distance of 8 pi over 4. When we do modeling tomorrow, or not tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, you're going to have to do that where it turns out being a subtraction problem. So the distance from peak to peak or middle to middle, whatever you're counting, um, you, that's what you got to figure out for period. So the B value, which is what I really need, is 2 pi divided by the period. So this is a special case of boring. It's a 1. Remember how Taylor decided to start our graph at the shifting of right pi over 4? I'm going to mark that down. And because of where she chose to start it, we're looking at a cosine graph. Who has been reflected so quick before I forget? Y equals negative 8 in front of that cosine function. I always forget the reflection mark. So there we go. Now, normally I'd put the B value down and then open a parenthesis for the phase shift. But since your B value is a 1, you really don't have to do that. Look at me being fancy using a theta. What does it look like for right pi over 4? Minus pi over 4. Instead of x. Although it's wrong because they labeled that. There, I fixed it. <laughs> 
I just feel like sometimes kids, if we don't use theta, they use theta a lot in calculus. And then I swear to goodness, there's kids that go off to college and they've never seen theta before. And then you got your professors who are saying theta and they're like, what? And I had a professor, um, he had a very thick accent from Turkey and he was saying phi, like the Greek letter phi. And it took me a year and a half to realize what he was saying because he called it like phi. And he said it just like that, like a really high pitched fee. And we were like, what is he saying? Like, and we were like, dude, we just felt ignorant. We didn't want to ask him. So, and he kept drawing it weird. Like it wasn't how, like, apparently I'm not as well versed in my Greek alphabet as I thought I was. And we were like, what is he writing? So I just went a year and a half with going fee in my head. And then <laughs> <laughs> like later I'm like, fi, he's saying fi. Ah, it's all clear now. No, I still had him. And he's just the sweetest man in the whole planet, so I don't blame him for it. You know. Sorry, Americans. We don't have, like, the the call on the Greek alphabet. It's not our thing. So we're probably saying it wrong. It's just the way I grew up saying it. And I was like, what, what was he saying? Oh, dang it. We had a vertical shift. See, I was blabbing about Greek alphabets. Minus two. Very good. Downshift. Negative two. Good call. Good catch. He's right. I'm the ignorant one. I just took me a year and a half to like connect. It's pretty pretty embarrassing. Was what it was. Both. He's very bright, and he probably was right. I'm probably the ignorant American who doesn't say the Greek letter right. Because why would I? You got to know the Greek alphabet to get into your frat and sorority. So start working on that. Okay. Say it the right way. I guess. Here we go. That ah, I can't read that. Are you kidding me? There's no ver there's no phase shift on that one. That's boring. All right, I need a, a vote from you. Do you want to do one more of these, or do you want to do one more sinusoidal regression? Sinusoidal regression. Okay. Um, this one, I'm not real stoked about the fact that they didn't tell me where to start my function, because if this was a homework question, we could all get different answers. So I'm just going to tell you that because of the way they're laying out their data, let's pretend it's like one of those weird fiscal year things where they randomly start your calendar in the middle of the year. Let's say this is um, X would represent number of months since July. So if we call it number of months since July, then this first August data point, that would be called one. And then it kind of goes from there. Because, see, it's just ignorant American, that was me. I'm sorry. Apologies, Professor. You were right. <laughs> no, I always knew he was right. I just couldn't understand what he was saying. This ignorant lady, me. We figured it out, though. It's okay. Um, start entering your data. I'm too tired to enter this data, and you guys are way faster than me. Type carefully. The phonetic. It's pi, but you know p is with an x. Mm. So it looks like mm -hmm. it's pi. I'm, he's much smarter than I am. It's probably phi. He's probably fluent in Greek. Right? Why would I? It, it wasn't a matter of I, I doubted his ability to pronounce it. We just literally didn't know what he was saying forever. Because we're ignorant. Mm. My bad. <laughs> All right, what'd you guys come up with for the sine equation when you regressed this? I got 12. Oh, wait, what? No, oh, I got 46 points. Did you put your date in? <laughs> this is what I got. Yeah, 0.52x minus. What's the rest of this though? 2.09 or something? Oh, 10? Yeah, because it was 0, 0.89. So can I do this? Yeah. Okay, and then plus 68.74. That looks beautiful. And then they don't want me to do anything with it. So why do we even find that equation? Boring. Oh well. 
That wasn't really the, the ending I was hoping for in this lesson. How about this? Here's your homework. You have four days to get caught up all the way through worksheet 14. <laughs> okay? I do. Daniel, you have that long car trip. Are you driving? Are you driving? Are you? Well, then you have all, you have all that time to do your trick. Um, if I can do trig on a tablet, you can do trig in a car. That's if I, the worst grapher on the planet, can write on a tablet, you can do trig in the car. Not this one. <laughs> well, you're not in a car. What are you complaining about? <laughs> All right, you know, I love the excuses. I can't wait to tell your parents about them when I call them this weekend. <laughs> Why don't you get that homework done so I don't have to make those nasty phone calls I was promising? Eh?